Catching the hundreds of the seven on the air. Two groups are leaving today, so uh, quite a few people are out here checking out the sunrise on this feast of St. Andrew, which gives us special readings. Look at all the growth coming, little growth, tiny growth. If it doesn't rain, it's going to rain tomorrow. I'm not sure what time it's starting. I disconnected it for uninterrupted view for you hopefully so calling all Andrews and Andy's and I think Andy works for girls as well uh, it works out like this that in some countries it's Andreas and Andrea and depending on the language, it can be masculine or feminine in those versions. But our original Andreas is apparently the older brother. I had never thought about that part of it. I just knew he was a brother of Simon Peter. But now the, the talk is that he's the older brother of Simon Peter. A lot of people understood that. I never pondered or reflected on that. So I was taken by surprise when I saw that note about Andrew and I love Andrew because he's low-key and he is uh, actually that's a nice spot there to get a spot with the sun with these plants he's low-key <coughs> and he's connecting people in a wonderful way if you look at the different stories, the first big connection he makes is with Jesus. But actually he learned from John the Baptist because he was a disciple of John the Baptist, which means he was then looking for some good stuff. He was looking for some good direction. And he got the blessing of that direction. Because John the Baptist pointed out to him, there's the Lamb of God. Heavy duty vocabulary, okay? It has a lot of biblical background. And Andrew starts following Jesus because he got connected to Jesus. Somebody else did that. But he in turn did lots of connections and we see he connected his own brother Peter. And he brought him to Jesus. What a way to live to bring people to this fountain of life, of, of goodness, of mercy. This fountain of, of kindness, of self-giving. To bring people in contact with people who lift up people it does so much because you don't have to say much yourself it's just in the experience of being connected to somebody else great things can happen and you see somebody else with their mind and heart and will living for goodness hey look at this archaeology here look at this stone It's no wonder because, I mean, this whole area is uh, obviously part of the city of Magdala. Like right up here is the Franciscan part. So uh, just behind that shed where they have a lot of their storage for the site. And there's the Greek 
gymnasium behind that, which is a school and uh, sports area. So I had never noticed these stones before, but there's, wow, 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 what's going on here? Sorry about this, people. My phone jumped around. If maybe if I made it a little slip there on the stone, it jerked the phone and it just responded that way. So Andrew also connects the little boy with the five loaves and the two fish. And look what happened there with that story and how it still impacts us today. How many times did Andrew hear these waves at the Sea of Galilee and pull in his nets and wash them? And then Jesus shows up on his shore and he says, Andrew, come follow me. I will make you fishers of men. And that's what Andrew's doing in the gospel. He's connecting people with Jesus. What a way to live. And he's not in the limelight. Imagine him in the boat when <clears throat> Peter says to Jesus, can I walk on the water with you? <clears throat> and Andrew's probably thinking in his heart, there goes Simon again. <laughs> his, Simon was that impetuous, uh, uh, unstoppable, go get, go do, go talk uh, person out in the front leading natural talents you know that we have different people have different strokes different folks different strokes different talents and there goes there goes uh peter out there you know and then he walks on the water imagine andrew's amazement watching his brother walking on the water and then seeing peter sink and <clears throat> he saw peter sink more than once but Jesus pulls him up every time. Do you love me, Peter? He had that great experience of <clears throat> the fruit of what he did by bringing his brother to, to Jesus. And he went on then to live his life completely spreading the gospel all around the Black Sea. That's the understanding and ending up in Greece and laying down his life and you know, he wanted not to be crucified like Jesus. That's what the, the tradition says. That he was crucified in an X-shaped cross, not a regular cross. And he didn't feel worthy to be crucified like our Lord. Like the centurion yesterday didn't feel worthy that Jesus had come into his house. And these are great people, you know, the people that know their own place and recognize God's gift and, and go with it, you know? <clears throat> if you see the letter there today to the Romans, because we have special readings today for, for this feast day, um, we see that, you know, the importance of <clears throat> the ones who go out and tell the story, make the connections, give people a hint where it's happening, <clears throat> where good stuff is happening. Wow, 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 wow. Come on. Second time on this sunrise stroll and chat, the Instagram, the whole, um, the gimbal did this jump on me. I apologize. <clears throat> People, I also want to tell you something <clears throat> about a change in program. Um, tomorrow evening, we start our eight day retreat, eight day silent retreat. You remember how many times Jesus calls the disciples to go with him to a quiet place to just stop and be with him and he teaches us. And so we, have, we need this time as well as priests, <clears throat> everybody who is active, even in teaching, you know, and anything. It's good to have a time of quiet to to get back to home base, so to say, spiritually, to hear God's invitation, to rest in the Lord, to let Him fill our hearts. 
and then we need this this break so we have eight days of silent retreat starting tomorrow night <clears throat> so i ask you to pray for us for all of our priests here in magdala wow 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 three times i'm sorry people <clears throat> I don't know why that happens. I'm going to just sit down here and wait till we finish. But <clears throat> so we won't be doing sunrise stroll and chat. <clears throat> Excuse me. For the next, uh, I'll do it tomorrow. Tomorrow is on. I hope to go up and mount our bell. I want to show you how nature is um, it's beginning to grow again. It's amazing. Oh, I was up there on Sunday, and it's marvelous to see it happening. And so that's my intent to go up there tomorrow. But then the next days, for eight days, we won't be doing sunrise stroll and chat. So you have a chance if you want to go back and look for your favorite one. But what I really recommend you to do is to take out um, your gospel, your readings from scripture, from the prophets, uh, you can just follow the links for Advent uh, in the top of the page. You just go to that arrow and you can press on to the next day. <clears throat> and there you can just go through the reading slowly. Let it enter into your heart, into your mind. And you will get lots of beautiful inspiration for sure. Also, a couple of people have been telling me about some people that are, wow, wow, wow. Four times in one day. Okay, some people are telling, two people are telling me that there are some people approaching them unduly, that they find their number and <clears throat> that they connected through this chat. Oh, I'm sorry. We're having a hard time this morning. So, uh, <clears throat> if people are approaching you, you know how to deal with them. You just, you can block them. You can block a contact who is just pushing stuff on you, pushing their persons on you, pushing their needs on you. And you're a free person. You can just simply block that chat, block that person. If you don't know how to do that, just ask somebody, how do you block somebody? that's entering into your communication sphere that you don't want. You're a free person. So don't be intimidated by people. Don't be pushed around by people. Um, you take care of, of yourself, your, your communication. And I feel I need to say that because a couple of people are, um, which is understandable all around the world in every sphere of life and business and politics and the church everywhere, there are people who, who have their own agenda and they're not there to serve, they're there to, to use, to misuse, maybe even to abuse. Uh, so you, you're smart enough to recognize that. And then you recognize the good things. <clears throat> We're looking over here to Bethsaida in Capernaum, Andrew's world, and here where he met Jesus, where he listened to his beautiful teaching, where he saw so many miracles. He saw Jesus pulling his brother out of the water after he was sinking. The storm on the sea, the miraculous catch of fish. You know, how well he knew these waters, these sunrises. The sound of the water. So, praying for you today. See you tomorrow, God willing, at Mount Arbel. That's my plan, if it's not wet. And then we... Um, uh, we continue this beautiful experience every morning at the Sea of Galilee. Uh, God bless you. See you later, alligators. Oops, sorry. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Was that five times or six times? Just the slightest touch to the screen triggered that last jump. <clears throat>